so I'm back. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, I also did a five best things about being a wildlife biologist video, uh, which may have brought you here, but uh, I will link to that one below if you guys are interested. But these are the five worst things about being a wildlife biologist. So I, before I start, I have the Beyond Burger from a and and let's just say I am in a tiny town in Alberta in the north and I can get a delicious Beyond Burger. Like this Beyond Burger thing at A&W is like probably one of the best things that's ever happened to my vegan diet uh, while working in the field. Cause this is like amazing. You could always get the veggie burger, but like, yes. Oh my God, it's so good. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna take one bite before we start. Oh my god. There is suddenly so many people trying to drive past me right now. Like, come on, I'm trying to make a YouTube video. What is going on? Okay, so number five, worst thing about being a wildlife biologist. I'm gonna turn off the door. Okay, so the layoffs. Uh if you are a wildlife biologist, just accept that you're going to go through so many layoffs in your life. Like I've been laid off. Okay. I've only been laid off once, but I've only been working for five years. No, no way. I've been laid off twice and I've been working for six years. So like a few years for each position is pretty normal. The reason why so many people get laid off when they're a wildlife biologist is just because of the cyclical nature of the work. And also a lot of times we're hired when things really pick up in construction. Um, that is if you're a private biologist, if you're a government biologist, might be a little bit different or a research biologist. Yeah, it might be a little different, a little bit less cyclical, but still like those type of jobs are hard to find. So just if you're working in construction or anything related to like new developments, you're gonna get laid off a lot. So get used to it. Number four. It is so competitive. Oh my God. It is so hard to get a permanent job. Like you could be doing contract work for years and years. And it seems like suddenly everyone wants to be a wildlife biologist since they, the age of five years old. And like you're competing with so many people who are graduating at the same time as you. And there's so few jobs in comparison to the actual amount of uh, people that are applying for all those jobs. So it is not unusual to see like a few hundred applications for one position, especially if it's a government position, it's like hundreds and hundreds of applicants. Oh my God. It can take years sometimes to get your first job, but like there are solutions like don't give up just because it's competitive. It just means you have to like differentiate yourself from the crowd. But like, unfortunately it's extremely competitive. Along those same lines, there is like not, relatively not too many jobs. Okay, for some reason my phone just died. Anyway, uh, so there's only so much funding, so many jobs. So it's really tough to get a job sometimes and to keep that job. Number three, the conditions of work are sometimes so exhausting. Like when you are up north, sometimes you're working, like today I'll be working probably 12 to 14 hour shift. And it's like every single day, like you don't get a day off sometimes for like two weeks and it is so exhausting and you are up in some of the roughest conditions. Like if it's raining, you're still working. If it's tornadoing, okay, like maybe you can go indoors, but generally like the bugs situation, the cold in the winter, like it's, I've been working in minus 50 degrees and no heating all day pretty much. So it can be extremely, extremely tough some days to just stay sane and not stress yourself out. And I feel like I'm just so overstressed all the time and that's something I'm really working on. But it's hard not to be when you're working such long hours and you're so far away from home just in a hotel room. Number two. Uh, it's really hard to maintain a relationship when you're a wildlife biologist that's a field biologist that's traveling most of the year. So sometimes I don't see my boyfriend for weeks and weeks and weeks and it really sucks. Uh, it does help to not fall in love with any other wildlife biologist because then you will never see each other, which is the case for so many of my coworkers. But uh, like my boyfriend works, um, like he never travels or anything. So it's not too much of a problem to see each other, but like I will go weeks sometimes without seeing him and it really sucks. And honestly, by the time I actually like settle down and have a family, I don't know if I could be in the field this much. Like I might have to transition to an office job because like it's hard enough to say, say goodbye to my cat, let alone like kids. So it can be really tough on relationships. And then the number one 
worst thing about being a wildlife biologist that is a constant source of stress for me is you can never make plans. Like I have to be ready to go into the field pretty much all the time. Like I can say no, I can say no, but like honestly you have to say yes to work when it comes around. And this might be part of like the consulting world. Like you might have a little bit more notice when you're working in government about when you actually have to go out into the field. But uh, unfortunately uh, I have been the flakiest friend ever. Like I flake out on vacations when it's the day before I'm supposed to go because suddenly my boss tells me I have to go into the field because there's some big spill or like some big environmental incident you know, whatever that I have to be out for. Unfortunately, this really sucks to try. This kind of goes along with the same point about maintaining relationships is it really sucks to try to tell your friends like, no, I have to work. And it's hard to have a work life balance. It's possible, but it's balanced out by the fact you get so much time off in winter that, you know, in summer, you're pretty much like a slave to your boss, which sucks, but it is what it is. So those are my five worst things about being a wildlife biologist. I hope that that didn't deter anyone who wants to do it, but it's just good to know what you're getting into before you go through all this schooling and everything to make sure you can handle it. Uh, if you're okay with all those things or you can make it work, then I encourage you to pursue the career. Watch my five best things about being a wildlife biologist video linked below. If you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and uh, like this video and I'll see what else kind of things I want to talk about in other videos. I'm still kind of taking each time as it goes. If you have an idea for a video on wildlife biology, veganism, environmentalism, whatever, if you want the perspective of a scientist on something, then um, comment below and I will see if I can make a video on that. But anyway, thanks for watching.